Daniel is the unluckiest guy you will ever see in your life. He's a super short guy. Also a complete otaku nerd with zero confidence or ego to speak of. He spends years of his life being treated like garbage by the society and everyone around him, especially his school where he is constantly being mocked by a gangsta boy called Logan and his sidekick and chick. They make him kneel in front of them, and he starts barking like a dog, and then kick him around even more. He's being made to mimic a pig, then accused of being a reject and a creep. They punched him in the face and he was left on the floor by the toilets. So guess, as you can see, this dude has got it pretty rough, and to top it all off, he also lives alone with his single mother. They are relatively poor, and he's rude to her occasionally because his life sucks and he can't take it out on anyone else. One day after coming back from school and being bullied once again, he heads up to cook himself some spicy Korean noodles, but feels afraid as he struggles with PTSD and can't help but see his bully's face in everything he does. Just then, his mom comes back home and cooks the noodles for him. Now, I'm going to be honest, that looks delicious. But apparently, Daniel is more concerned about the boiled egg that she put in his noodles and he tells her to stop doing that, and that it's no wonder that he is only getting fatter with her careless cooking habits. He then tells her that he wants to transfer to some other school, because everyone else in his class is smarter, and it is really hard for him to get good grades. But in reality, it has to do with getting him being made fun of every single day. Unfortunately, transferring costs money and so is moving out and to another house. His mom tries to tell him that despite all his struggles, he's still a fat kid who doesn't make anything and they can't really afford to just move places like that. She asks him about his friends and he just rushes out saying what good friends or if he can't get good grades, completely covering the fact that he has no friends or a life like most of you watching. After that, he punches through their cardboard wall, which is the same material houses in America are made from, and then runs out like an ungrateful whale saying that she never did anything for him and it's not his fault that they are poor. Now, I'm sure that 300 kilos of fat on his belly says otherwise, but let's give him the benefit of the doubt for the plot. The next day, he goes back to the school and runs into a girl and falls back. I wonder how physics works for him honestly because I'm sure running into him would send Godzilla back instead of him falling over but well, the girl tells him to apologize and watch where he is going. He tries to speak up for himself for once but then Logan's chick comes by and he just says sorry like a tame dog. Soon Logan follows up and asks him if he had his gym clothes ready and Mr. Good Boy Daniel tells him that he will have it on his desk right away. Later in the day, Logan makes a bet with his cringe, soxer head messy fan friend to see who hits Daniel's face first with the football. They both take turns taking shots at him and Daniel manages to dodge Logan's shot because he's just bad and the other dude gets a straight shot at his face with a powerful kick. After getting his face smashed in by the football, Logan walks up to him and asks him why he dodged his shot and then punches him in the guts making him fall on the ground immediately. After that he picks him up and starts slapping him left and right until Daniel's mom runs in and tries to stop him from hitting her kid. Looking at her, everyone starts laughing and calling Daniel a loser, and this makes him really mad as well, and he tells his mother that she is embarrassing him and then says sorry to Logan instead. After school, he goes back home and talks to his mom. She tells him that she was at his school to discuss transferring options with the principal. They came up with a few options but due to her work, she won't be able to move out with him, so he will have to live alone but she will send him some money to live by even if it's not much. With that, Daniel moves out and starts living in a small room in the slums located near the city. On his first day out, he runs into yet another beautiful girl, but unlike his past experiences, she is really polite and actually apologizes to him. Though, I still don't know how that run-in physics works. Soon, the girl's boyfriend arrives and she walks off with him, but he catches Daniel smiling like a creep, and he turns around to see what's his problem. Being more than just an idiot, he says that he ran into the girl, and well, they both start talking, and the boyfriend ends up beating the hell out of him, and making a mess of him, in front of the whole crowd who takes this opportunity to record it on video and post it online to go viral. And just like that, Daniel became one of the most popular punching bags on the internet, before he even began his new life after transferring. The following night, he wakes up and wonders why the ceiling looks near and the water basin looks lower, and then looks at the mirror and wonders just who the hell is the guy he's looking at. Turns out the tooth fairy was too generous that night, and instead of leaving him a penny, she left him with some ridges in a hot body. He walks back to his room and sees his own fat body sleeping on the floor. He walks up to it and tries to wake him up, 
and just then opens his eyes back in his normal body. At first, he thinks that it is all a dream, but then he turns around to see the hot dude lying beside him, and the first thing he checks is his own backside for any pain. After confirming that the dude from earlier didn't beat the straightness out of him, he tries to wake the hot sleeping guy up and just like that, he falls asleep in this body and wakes up in the other. God knows how, but now he has two bodies at his disposal, and he can take control of one of them at a time by sleeping in the other. After panicking a little bit and having a bit of identity crisis, he decides to keep the new body on for a while and goes to his new school as the new hot transferee, Daniel Park. Everyone in his school and class looks in awe as they watch his beautiful features and girls immediately start simping for him, and we had to see his Riz pheromones in action. After making introductions, the teacher tells him to go take his seat in the back and hot Daniel walks to it with his head down. He feels extremely uncomfortable with everyone looking at him and thinks back on his first day at the last school. He remembers how everyone was rude to him from day one and how nobody wanted to talk to him at all. He turns his head to see the guy sitting next to him only to realize that it is none other than the boyfriend guy from yesterday, who beat the hell out of him and made him an internet meme. Then he turns the other way and notices his girlfriend that he ran into sitting a few seats in front and looking back at him and the only thing that crosses his mind is that he's screwed. Just then, the boyfriend talks to Daniel and introduces himself as Zach. Daniel gives his name back, but then they are interrupted by the school's go to flirt Zoe. With hot Daniel's good looks and Riz pheromones at work, she can't help but fix her makeup and rushes to him to introduce herself. Looking at her take the lead, all the other girls in the class become jealous and even Zach tells her that she is annoying and thinks that all girls are like that. But then he looks at his friend, Mira, and notices that she is looking at Daniel as well and becomes extremely jealous. After class, Daniel goes to the mess hall to grab his lunch and Zoe follows him around like an annoying tutorial guide. She asks him why he joined in as a fashion major and he says that he thought it would be fun but internally thinks back and sees that it was the only choice he had given his poor self. With his average grades and good attendance record, after school, he goes out to a local park and tries to get used to his new body. He practices his gait and walking posture and realizes how light and fast he is. Feeling invincible and fit for the first time in his life, he runs around till his heart is content and has the time of his life enjoying it. But this ends up making him feel really tired the next day and he falls asleep during his class. As his hot body falls asleep, he opens his eyes back in the chubby body and starts panicking. He tries to go back to sleep, but because this body has been asleep all day, he can't force himself to sleep either. He tries his hardest anyways, and suddenly wakes up in the other body freaking the ghost out of Zoe. She tells him that he was asleep even after classes, and so she woke him up, and he thanks her for it a lot. The following night, he goes out to look for a night job, so he can work at night to tire his chubby body out and let his hot body rest up. Besides that, this will also help him earn money to support himself. He finds a local convenience store running advertisement for a night shift role, and he decides to try his luck out there. He walks inside, and the store owner becomes excited seeing a hot guy asking for a job. He thinks that it will help his store attract girls and more customers, and tells him that he can start immediately, and he will even pay him good, but then Daniel breaks his bubble by saying that he is asking for a friend. The next night, Daniel checks in and asks for the job in his chubby body and the store owner becomes sad looking at this ugly fatso standing in front of him. He says that he can't give him the job and says that it will be hard for him because he probably can't even remember the various cigarette brand names. But Daniel surprises him by reading out all the names and we find out that it's because he has been buying those for years for his previous bully when running errands for him. Using information from another world is so last year. This dude shining with knowledge he gained through getting bullied. Seeing this, the owner decides to hire him, but the pay is lower than what he offered hot Daniel. Later that night, Zach and some of his friends walk into the store to buy beers, and Daniel refuses to give it to them because they are underage. When Zach sees him, he remembers that it is the same guy who was smiling at Mira, and he starts bullying him right there and then. He reads his name tag, and it reminds him of the hot Daniel, and out of jealousy, he starts beating him to the ground and even takes pictures of him with his pants down. This incident brings Daniel back to the reality of life that looks or everything in his life as chubby Daniel is just as miserable no matter where he goes. The next day, he goes to the school in his hot body and feels really down with what happened last night. Mira and Zoe greet him good morning, and Zoe tells him that Zach has something funny to show them. 
Turns out they are looking at the pictures Zack and his friends took last night after beating him up and are laughing at him. They even end up insulting him and his mother, and Daniel thinks that it's enough. He stands up and tells them to not bet mouth the guy's mother and Zack becomes mad at him, thinking he is showing off in front of Mira. He stands up and takes a boxing stance and starts off by throwing a punch at him, but a yellow-haired guy Jay stops him and tells him to calm down. Mira also joins in but Zack pulls his hand back and throws a punch at Daniel anyways. Everyone speaks about Zack's background as a boxer and how no one is able to see his punches, but surprisingly, Daniel uses his wisdom from getting bullied one on one and reveals that after getting punched by bullies of years, at some point he became able to see the punches coming, but his body was never able to keep up and dodge. But now, with this athletic body, he easily sidesteps and dodges the punch making everyone surprised. After that, Zack continues throwing punches at him, but Daniel dodges them all as if he has Sheringan, but eventually gets pushed back against the lockers. Zack sees this as a chance and tries to land a hard punch, but Daniel remembers that he has two good hands as well, and he blocks it by grabbing his punch in his hand. This shocks Zack, and he starts thinking that Daniel might be an experienced fighter. Meanwhile, Daniel is internally crying in fear like King from One Punch Man. Soon the crowd around them starts taking pictures and recording them, and this reminds him of when he was bullied and out of pure rage. He uses the 269th technique of the getting bullied style, punching the enemy hard in the guts. He knocks Zack down, and he feels extremely humiliated about this as everyone takes pictures and the news makes rounds across the school that the new hot guy defeated Zack with a single punch. This however attracts the attention of bullies and gang leaders from other classes as well and Daniel seems to have made more enemies now. One night, while looking over the store, a young boy walks in and grabs a box of USB charger, tucks it under his shirt and starts running out. Daniel chases after him and follows him into an alleyway where he finds the boy meeting up with Zack's lackeys who bullied him before. Turns out the boy is called Gio and he is also in their fashion class and is their go-to errand boy. He's basically what Daniel was in his last school. He tells them to give back the stolen item, but they show him the picture and tell him to let it slide or else this picture might go viral on the internet. After that, they make him and Gio fight each other for their entertainment. They start recording them as Gio beats Daniel like a sissy and laughs at them, but then they hear someone call them out from the shadows and they turn around to see Vasco standing behind them. He grabs Du up with one hand and he starts begging and apologizing to him. Vasco tells them to shut up and go home and lets them run off with their tails between their legs. After that, he turns to the two sissies like an angel and tells them that they should consider working out. Next day at school, Hot Daniel looks around for Gio in his class, but he is absent and then asks Zoe for information on Vasco. She reveals that he is a gang leader and the founder of the Burn Knuckles gang from the architecture department. Just then, Zach's lackeys walk by and tell him that Vasco is good to the weak, but he hates show-offs and then say that they would like to join him for lunch as well. But Zo isn't excited about this and becomes mad at them. Just then Vasco walks in with his group and the lackeys point at them, making Daniel look as well. He recognizes Vasco from last night and calls out to him. Vasco walks up to him and asks him what he meant last night and if he is going to avenge his evil friends who were bullying others. Thinking that he is also a bad guy and a show-off who beats Zack, he grabs his shoulder and pushes him down on his knees with his strong grip. His game cheers on while everyone thinks that that's it for Daniel as no one has ever escaped Vasco's shoulder grab. So he tries to stop them and Zack walks in to look at the show as well. Just then, Daniel grabs Vasco's wrist with his hand and starts lifting it off his shoulder. Vasco pushes him down harder but Daniel forces him back and says that he's sorry if he offended him, but he thought that he looked like someone he met last night. Everyone is shocked to see Daniel contest Vasco with one hand and things start looking spicy. But then, one of the gang members walks in and stops things from escalating into a fight as he believes that Vasco would have been the one who gets knocked out if they were to fight. After that, Zoe and the lackeys surround Daniel and tell him that he is really strong and they would like to be friends with him and invite him to hang out with them later that night. At night, Daniel meets up with them at a restaurant slash drinking bar where they all sit down for dinner and drinks. This being his first time ever having friends, Daniel feels nervous but eventually gets inside and sits down with them. Just then, Zack also arrives and at first there seems to be some tension between them, but that gets resolved when he asks him about his girlfriend. Mira and Zoe reveals that they ain't dating and that he confessed to her so they went out on a single date. 
Daniel says that he thought they were together, and how they looked great with each other, and this makes Zack really happy, and he befriends Daniel while half drunk. Daniel also tells them that he lives on his own and shares his room with a bigger guy who already dropped out of school and works at night. Somehow, they all think that it must be someone strong and like a gangster, and they avoid asking for his address. Later that night, he takes out his phone to show everyone the video he took of Gio beating fat Daniel. Daniel becomes mad with all this bullying BS and decides to drink up and then breaks his phone saying that he shouldn't bully others. After that, he immediately falls asleep as he can't handle this booze well. He then wakes up in his chubby body and tries to sleep again but can't get back to hot Daniel because of the alcohol. He decides to rush out and retrieve the body himself and goes to the restaurant in his chubby body. There he introduces himself as his friend and says that Daniel's roommates sent him there to get him. Everyone thinks that he has it rough being his lackey and working so late at night and decides to call it a day. As they all walk out, Zack looks at an arcade punching machine and shows chubby Daniel who throws a punch like a boxer and tells him to make sure that no one punches him around ever again. After that they all go away and Daniel tries his hands at the punching machine. But then he notices some people coming towards him, so he runs away with his hot body on his back. Meanwhile, the people walking towards him turn out to be Vasco and his gang, and he catches Daniel punching the machine. He notices the bag tear up, and then tries the machine himself and looks like he sees some potential in chubby Daniel. The next day, Daniel goes to the school and meets Jiho and befriends him thinking that they are both similar and starts looking out for him. Meanwhile, his mom is on inspection duty as she decides to pay him a visit at his house and finds the chubby boy sleeping when it's supposed to be at the school studying. After coming back from school, he finds his house's door open and walks in to see his mom sitting near his chubby body. She asks him who he is and he introduces himself as Daniel's friend, and then takes her out to a coffee shop and tells her everything about their friendship. He tells her how Daniel has started the night job at a convenience store and how he is doing fine at school with his friends and is happy, and she does not have to worry about him. He also tells her that he is living with him and that his name is Daniel as well. Their conversation goes good and Mama Daniel leaves happily. She gives him a 5001 note and tells him that she is really happy to know that her son has such a handsome and caring friend and tells him to take care. At first, he is reluctant to take the money, but after she insists, he takes it to respect her wishes. Now you might think this looks all good and well so spice things up here this. It just so happens that Vasco is drinking coffee at the same shop and he happens to overhear their whole conversation. He is still under the impression that Hot Daniel is abusing Chubby Daniel and using him as his lackey, and then becomes super mad when he sees him take money from the old lady. After she goes away, Vasco walks out and tells Daniel to come with him to an empty construction site. He turns around and tells Daniel to take off his blazer, and then starts fighting him saying that he is really a rotten person for lying to the chubby boy's mother, and he can take him money from her. Daniel tries to clear the misunderstanding but Vasco responds with a straight punch, Daniel dodges back and tells him to stop fighting but Vasco continues with another punch and a kick combo. Daniel dodges all of his attacks barely and even gets his cheek hurt from one of the punches. He tells him that he will give the money to the chubby kid and he never meant to keep it for himself but Vasco doesn't believe him and asks him to give him the money. Daniel thinks that he is just being a bully and says that he would never give him that money and resolves to fight back. After that, Vasco continues fighting while Daniel keeps dodging like some acrobat and eventually finds an opening to go for a punch at his guts. But to his surprise, Vasco blocks it with his leg and says that he has been training all his life to perfect this stance that allows him to defend himself while staying on the offensive. Daniel wonders what he can do against him and then remembers Zack's advice and holds his hands up in a boxing stance. After that, he steps forward and proceeds to deliver a professional punch just like Zack had shown him before but surprisingly, Vasco dodges it and goes for a counterattack. But just then, Daniel's body starts moving on its own, and he spins around and knocks Vasco down with an elbow attack to his face. Soon, Vasco's friend, Jace arrives on the scene and takes care of him as Daniel runs back home. Later that night, chubby Daniel wonders how he defeated Vasco. Just then, Vasco walks into the store and apologizes to him for not being able to get his money back. He then tells him that he is not weak and he should train and then leaves the store. Hearing these words, chubby Daniel thinks back on his experience getting bullied all the time and decides to man up and get his body in shape. He gets on the ground and starts doing push-ups, but just then, a beautiful lady walks in 
and catches him farting his soul out trying to push himself up on the second count. Daniel feels embarrassed and quickly gets up and welcomes her and then proceeds to check her purchased items out on the counter. The girl gives the energy drink to him instead and says cheers to his workout and then walks out. Being the Sigma simp he is, he gets back on the ground once she leaves and tries to do some sit-ups this time, though his belly is too big for him to do it even once. The next day, one of the fashion class students runs into Zack and his friends and they start bullying him a little for copying Zack and wearing the same shoes as him, but then Zack lets him go and says that it's fine. The lackeys wonder why he's so nice nowadays and just continue following him like the mindless NPCs that they are. Later in the class, the fashion guy walks in with hopes of showing off his fake Chrome Hearts ring, but gets completely ignored when Jay walks in with all his fingers shining with originals. The attention-seeking fashion boy meets up with some of the other cannon fodder NPCs and they start analyzing Jay's sense of fashion and realize just how rich he is to be able to afford and wear watches and accessories worth millions so casually. Zo being Zo, complains how he is so handsome and rich, but it's such a waste because he never talks to anyone and remains silent throughout the class. Just then our boy Hot Daniel walks in and as usual, girls start flocking around him as if he is Adonis laced in Riz pheromones. The jealous fashion squad starts analyzing him as well and breaks down that he is handsome but broke as hell. He wears the same old shoes every day, wears no accessories to speak of, and carries a rag for a bag. Meanwhile, Jay hears them out and looks at Daniel and feels bad for him. On the other hand, Vasco is absent and the burned knuckles ask their vice leader, Jace, about him. He tells them about Vasco's defeat and then orders them that Vasco wants them to lie low and keep an eye on the new student as he has not told anyone about their fight and they don't know what his goal is. At lunchtime, Daniel walks alongside Gio and they run into one of the other gang leaders in the school, Vin from the vocal and dance department. He is bullying his fellow classmate, Duke and using him as his lackey, just like Chubby Daniel used to be with Logan in his last school. Daniel can't bear to stand it and walks forward and meets Vin face to face. Everyone around them forms a crowd and Vin asks him if he is going to stop him and prepares to punch him, but then one of the teachers arrives and they all walk away silently. After that, Daniel reaches out to Duke and invites him to join him at the lunch table. Duke feels awkward while sitting with him as everyone else stares at them, wondering what a hot guy like Daniel is doing with two losers like them. Duke asks him why he is sitting with him, and he says that he wants to be friends because they are similar. Duke says that there is nothing similar between them and says that he is ugly and poor, while Daniel is handsome and popular. Daniel says that he is poor too and then goes to fetch water for them, but Duke walks off thinking that it is all absurd. After school, Daniel gets a call from his mom, and Jay overhears their conversation and finds out that tomorrow, it is Daniel's birthday. He decides to prepare a gift for him like the kind-hearted good boy, he does and goes home to write him a birthday note and packs some expensive branded clothes for him. Meanwhile, some members of the Burn Knuckles think that Jace is trying to take over and that the order to lie low wasn't from Vasco. They decide to group up and ambush Daniel and show him who's the real boss, but unfortunately for them, Jay overhears their plan and takes care of them like the silent Sigma male he is. After whooping their backsides, he goes to meet Daniel and gives him bags of clothes as a birthday present and tells him that he was just going to throw them anyway so he can have it. In reality, he bought in fashion branded clothes for him, but he says it so he doesn't feel bad about it. After that, he drives off instantly without expecting anything more. Next day at school, the NPC fashion squad gets in place and decides to wait for Daniel to walk in so they can ask him about the brands of clothes he is wearing and then embarrass this brokey boy. But to their surprise, Daniel walks in looking like Jungkook BTS member and wearing new branded clothes. Everyone gathers around him and compliments him on his style and asks him where he got those and he says that it was a gift from a friend, hiding Jay's identity just like he wanted. Later that evening, Duke and Vin go to a record label for some auditions and they pick Vin up and the director refuses to even let Duke sing because he's ugly. On his way back, everyone in the bus looks at him as if he's a creep, and he continues to ignore them and acts kindly. Besides that, he only thinks about writing lyrics and becoming a cool rapper who writes with feelings and emotions that he is experiencing in life right now. We find out that he is also very poor like Daniel, and he lives alone with his grandma in a small rundown room for a house. The next day, posters for the Temp G1 Festival are up and applications are open. 
Duke takes one of the application forms and just then Daniel also enters the building. People around them gossip that Daniel's family owns a big company and wonder why he's talking to someone like Duke and say that it must be because he wants him as a lackey. Daniel walks up to him and asks about the festival and Duke tells him to stop doing this and making people think that they are friends or something. After that, he goes to his class and is bullied by Vin and his puppies like usual. After school, Duke walks back home and runs into his grandma, who is selling some snacks on a cart. She greets him and tells him to eat some, but he says that she needs to sell them and then goes back home. But before he can walk on, he runs into Vin and his friends and they see him standing at the cart. Duke's grandma looks at the boys and asks them if they were his friends and they say that they were his classmates and grandma starts grannying and offers them to sit down and eat as much as they want. Vin and his piggies take her up on the offer and start feasting on all the food she has and then walks away without even paying. Despite all this, Granny gives them some takeaways and wishes them good health and tells them to stay good friends with Duke and the pretentious bullies greet her back and then walk away before throwing the takeaways on the street after walking a little farther. The next day, Duke walks into the class only to see them biasing his grandma's food and advertising it on the whiteboard saying that their food sucks and no one should ever go buy from them. And as if this was not enough, Vin also walks in and pushes him on the ground, telling him to clear the way. Later at lunchtime, they keep abusing him as usual by making him fetch food and drinks for them and even beating him and pushing him on the floor. Looking at all this, Daniel keeps remembering his past self and thinks that the only reason his life is different right now is because of this hot rizzling sizzling body, and without it, he would have ended up the same as Dupe again. He gives his tray to Joe, and then walks up to Vin to stop him and realizes that Jay is also standing beside him. Vin asks what they want from him and prepares to fight them, but then Zack also joins them saying he just wants to eat with Duke. Vin gets mad at these three hot boys standing up to him and starts popping his veins but then Vasco and the burned knuckles arrive and they stand in front of him as well. Vin asks him if he had recovered already and that they heard he beat a dozen men or something in a fight and Vasco looks at Daniel with sharp eyes before telling Vin to shoo away. Being outnumbered, Vin walks away and then Vasco turns towards Daniel and asks him why he tried to save Duke and if having one lackey wasn't enough for him. Daniel says that it is all a misunderstanding and before it can escalate into a fight, Vasco's friends calm him down and take him away. After that, everyone starts flocking around Daniel saying how he is so kind but he pushes them aside and walks up to Duke and asks him if he is alright. Still thinking that Daniel is just being nice to use him. He walks away while holding his injured arm and doesn't say anything. Daniel looks down to see the torn festival application and takes it with him, feeling sad for Duke. The next morning, Daniel waits for Duke outside the school's entrance and hands him the application form that he patches up with some tape. Duke tells him that he is just being nice to him to become popular. He then tells him to stop all this or to bully him as well and beat him down, because no matter how much they all beat him, he will keep writing lyrics like Eminem. Marshall Bruce Mathers III. Daniel asks what that was about and Duke says that Eminem was bullied as well because of being poor but gained international recognition for his rapping skills and his clever lyrics which resonate with everyone in pain. Later in class, Duke is again bullied by Vin who wants him to drop out of the festival and he ends up tearing his lyrics notepad and beats him to the ground after school. Duke feels defeated and thinks that he won't ever become someone special like Eminem and loses all hope. Meanwhile, Daniel is on cleaning duty after class and he wonders if he should join the festival as a singer and how he would have never even thought about it before in his chubby body. He then thinks about Duke and how it must be so important to him and then starts singing by the window like some sad Disney princess. Duke hears him sing from below and this gives him the hope that he just lost. Man knows money when he sees it. He runs upstairs and meets Daniel and asks him if he will sing with him in the festival as a duo where he would be the rapper. After classes, Duke invites Daniel to his home and wonders if it will be his first time walking into such a rundown and dirty place. He thinks that he must be disappointed by all this but to his surprise. The first thing Daniel does is turn off the lights and he tells him that it's daytime so he should save on his electricity bill. After that, he helps him stack up all the newspapers and tells him that they are very useful as they can use them inside their shoes to keep unwanted moisture out and they are good for cleaning windows as well because the ink absorbs all the dust. Besides that, you can use them to store vegetables for weeks as well.
Hearing all this, Duke says that he must have a really good upbringing to know all this, and Daniel says that it is just something that he learned growing up and watching his mother do around the house. After that, they decide to finally sit down and practice, and Daniel questions if he can even sing well. Duke reassures him by saying that he believes his singing to be honest and full of feelings, and then says that he rearranged the song he was singing and even edited in another melody to make it longer and better. Daniel looks at him and thinks how dedicated and passionate he is, and thinks that it is really cool of Duke to have something like that. After practicing for a while, the sun goes down and Daniel walks back home alongside Duke. Daniel's stomach starts growling and Duke apologizes for not fixing him a meal back home, but Daniel says that it's all fine and he got to listen to good music thanks to him. On their way, they run into Duke's grandma on her cart, and she invites him to have some food. But Daniel says that he is full and thanks her for thinking of him, and then says his goodbyes to Duke and goes away like a gentleman. The next day, Duke comes to school with the recomposed music, and they practice at lunchtime alongside Jiho. Jiho says that they are doing an incredible job, and they decide to practice for a couple hours after school as well. Later that day, after all the practicing, Daniel's throat hurts a bit, and Duke tells him to not overdo it, and it's fine because he won't become good in just two weeks, so he should focus on memorizing the lyrics and avoid hurting his vocal cords. Meanwhile, Vin and his friend get special treatment at the studio, where the director gives them professionally produced lyrics and music, and tells them to win the festival. He tells them that if the song does good and people like them as well, they will release the song as their debut on the professional scene. Later that night, Daniel tries to practice singing while on his night duty at the store and notices that his throat doesn't hurt because he hasn't been practicing in this body. He makes full use of it and practices twice as hard, and uses both bodies to his advantage to improve a lot. Two days later, while showing Duke the results of his training, Duke tells him to stop doing this because he shouldn't overdo it. But Daniel says that he does not have to worry, and he is taking good care of himself. After that, Duke tells him that he is totally amazing to improve by this much in such a short amount of time and says that he must be a genius. Later on after school, Daniel says his goodbyes and walks back home, and just then Duke and Gio are approached by Vin and his gang, and they start beating Duke for teaming up with Daniel and competing against him in the festival. They even make Gio beat him or else they would bully him as well, but then Vin gets a call, and he leaves for his vocal lessons, sparing the two. After this incident, Gio feels like a loser, and he goes to the convenience store alongside Duke to apologize to chubby Daniel for beating him the other day and being a coward. They'd all sit on some steps and drink some soda as they talk about their bullied and miserable lives. They'd all realize that they are the same and become friends. After that, Gio and Duke tell Daniel how they were saved by this hot dude in their school and how he is so kind in everything. Just then, Vasco arrives on the scene and asks if everything they said about hot Daniel was true and they confirm by saying that it was because of him that they weren't bullied anymore and that he never asked for anything in return and is always good to them. Chubby Daniel also clears the misunderstanding about the money that his mom gave hot Daniel and Vasco, thanks them for clearing his misunderstanding. With these things cleared up, they all go back to their routine as Duke and Gio work on the music while Daniel practices his singing. Ten days go by and the day of the festival is coming closer. After all this practice, it looks like they might actually win a reward in the festival, and everyone is excited to see how they perform. Finally, the day of the festival approaches, and it attracts students and directors from the whole city. Girls and boys from other schools also join in and enjoy various stalls and booths set up by students from the art, fashion, and hairdressing departments. Among these guests, a rich-looking pair also decides to check the event out including the beautiful kind lady that has been cheering chubby Daniel up till this point at his part-time duty at the store. While she is walking around with her bodyguard, Hot Daniel notices her in the crowd and rushes forward to talk to her. He meets up with them in the parking lot and tells her to stop but the bodyguard holds his hand and tells him to keep his distance. The girl asks him who he is and tells him to stop trying to act as if they know each other just because he is a little handsome and that the school was filled with people like him. Daniel realizes that he never met her in this hot body and how the lady is not her usual kind self right now. As she starts walking away, he tries to stop her again, but the bodyguard holds his wrist and tells him to stand down. Daniel pulls his hand away, making them surprised as the bodyguard is supposed to be really strong. The guard then takes up his stance and goes for a punch, but Daniel blocks it in time, so he tries to kick him instead. 
Daniel manages to block it with his arms, but the impact is strong enough to push him on his knees. The guard then walks up to beat him up saying his orders were absolute. The lady tries to stop him, but he doesn't listen, and just then Vasco arrives on the scene and asks him what he was doing. He says that he is Daniel's friend and then walks up to the guard. He punches Vasco in the face making his nose bleed but Vasco keeps standing still and tells him to take his glasses off and prepare to fight, because he doesn't punch people wearing glasses. Just then, Daniel also stands up and takes a fighting stance making the guard excited. But then the lady tells him to calm down or else he will lose his job, and they go away but not before the lady apologizes to Daniel for getting him hurt. After they leave, Daniel sits down with Vasco and they share a banana drink together as friends and then Daniel goes inside to prepare for his performance. Their show will be the last act of the night on the grand stage. Jay lends them some fashionable clothes from his rich daddy pockets while Vin and his friend taunt them and tell them to watch how it's done as they walk on the stage for their performance before them. As expected, their performance is a blast and they capture the hearts of the whole audience with their professional lyrics and good music. Duke compliments their performance but Vin thinks that he is just too much of a jerk to accept praise from him, so he punches him in his guts right before it is turned. Daniel rushes in and decides to fight back, but Duke tells him that they will show them through their song, and then they both walk up to the stage and face the massive crowd. At first, Daniel is nervous, and he messes up the opening but Duke covers up by starting it strong and giving Daniel time to reflect on his previous advice, to think of the person he loves the most and to sing with his heart for them. With that, Daniel imagines his hardworking and loving mother and gives his best by channeling the Disney princess inside him and totally slaying it on the stage with Duke. Their performance totally kills it, and they become the stars of the show by completely wiping the floor with Vin and getting the trophy at the end. After the show, the director tells Vin to stand by and they will think about his professional career, and then go to Daniel and offer him to sign with them early on. Daniel asks about Duke, but the director says that while he sings fine, he can't make a living by going pro because that is part of this world's cruel reality. He's not handsome, and so the public would never pick him over the competition, and then tells Daniel to sign alone. Daniel says that he is not interested, and declines the invitation and makes everyone surprised, and with that everything goes back to normal. The video of their singing goes viral, with over 100,000 views overnight, and Duke and Gio enjoy it alongside chubby Daniel at night outside his store. Meanwhile, the beautiful lady also looks at the video and realizes that it's the same guy who she met in the parking lot and wonders why he sang the same song that the chubby Daniel was practicing. And it looks like there is a secret that she holds as well as we see a small chubby girl body sleeping in her bed. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe for more. And until next time, guys, take care.